my colleagues in the audience and fellow floaters, to the audience in the virtual land, good afternoon and good day. I would like to acknowledge my two co-investigators, Dr. Eric Matthews and Dr. Jeff Alexander from AT Still University. This is a, an overview of our research project, in which I will discuss with you the background and significance of our work, and also the purpose. If we look at the purpose, the purpose arises from a problem, differentiating expert floaters from novice floaters. And there are a lot of medical reasons why we need to standardize that type of importance, both in terms of sociology as well as in terms of the practice of medicine and healing. But I would like to ask the audience a few questions. How many of you meditate with your eyes open? One? A few? How many of you meditate with your eyes closed? Wow! How many of you have experienced altered states of consciousness with your eyes open? A few again? What about closed? Yes. Well. The evidence is written in stone that we can experience these states of altered states by, our, by having our eyes opened. And this statue, this photograph of this statuette was taken by me decades ago when I studied yoga in Northwest India. This is from the Dilwala Temple where there are 180 yogis sitting in, in geometric arrangements, and all of them have their eyes open. And this temple is about more than 2,000 years old. What we set out to measure, we defined as the altered state spectrum, including the generalized altered states of consciousness, the relaxation response, and shamanistic states of consciousness. But to do this, we had to develop a model. And this model we called the psych cell model, which has as its pillars a model developed by Pereira called the soul cell model, and also the orchestrated observation reduction theory ORC OR theory developed by Hammerhoff and Penrose, which has a lot of quantum mechanics. This is an overall view of our experimental approach. We actually did an anonymous survey of 100 participants, and then we analyzed the data statistically. Of course, in interpreting the data, we used uh, our model. But this is our research hypothesis, hypothesis in terms of generalized altered states of consciousness, which we measured by the mystical experience for the three scale, the relaxation response, which was measured by the experience from normal deviation scale, and also shamanistic states of consciousness, which was, which was measured by 
the Grayson near-death experience scale. Of course, there are these regions which we associate with mindfulness. There is some commonality or sharing of these regions with the altered state spectrum. These are part of our preliminary or descriptive results. Of course, there were more female participants than male participants. But what we did find was a type of a synergistic effect, especially in the expert floaters compared to the novice floaters. We were also able to develop two very important equations from statistical analyses. One for predicting whether an individual will be an expert or novice floater, and the other one, which is this one here, for differentiating an expert and a novice floater. This is the equation for predicting. Dr. Jill de Costa has spoken a lot about brainwaves, but then how do we interpret these findings in terms of brainwaves? We adapted a biophysical approach in which we went into quantum mechanics. We know that if we look at the effects of meditation, meditation which is part of the altered state spectrum, has all of these effects, including at a translational and transcription level, as was demonstrated by Basham and Benson about three or four years ago. But we also know that this is happening at a quantum level because electrons are involved in neurotransmission. We know that electrons can behave as particles and waves. We also know that with these altered states, there are associated ultra-low photonic emissions called biophotons. And according to Hammerhoff and Penrose, this is happening at the level of the microtubules. We also developed another equation, and please don't be scared by this, <laughs> <laughs> because what it is showing you is that the generalized altered states of consciousness will produce uh, uh, photons associated with the brain waves. The relaxation response will also produce uh, specific types of photons and also shamanistic states of consciousness. But this is one of the problems that we all have to solve in FLRS research, we want to know exactly what's happening inside of the individuals. And our approach to do that is to develop from, to have a biomechanical and a biomimetic approach in which we use robotic animals to first demonstrate that we can detect the changes by using ordinary light, and then to develop devices that are sensitive enough from biomimicry of the organs of special senses of super predators. This is work that is already in progress. For example, the ampullae of Lorenzini in sharks, they have developed a device from that that can detect electroreceptive changes in hyperosmolar solutions. One other application of FLREST is connecting floaters by two biochips in which we can then observe what is happening in the biochips. My other approach that I plan to do, conduct at the Janela campus of Howard Hughes's Medical Institute, is to utilize a technique called line sheet isoview microscopy, in which you can actually see the thoughts of a zebrafish. I would close by acknowledging 
those individuals who played a role in the research. And I would also say thanks a million or thanks a million. <laughs>